me fixing everything and because there is always something to be fixed today p0340 camshaft sensor incorrect signal present which means that even now uh, the signal is not okay if we clear the fault the codes it will disappear and when we start the car I got a little bit of uh, waiting time happening refresh the list and we got the fault which means that the car uh, on contact is okay but after starting it doesn't like the signal and um, it throws a code let's have a look at the camshaft sensor itself okay so the camshaft sensor is located on this engine on this side this is a uh, upper box of Zafira so it's right where the camshafts are this is a 16 valve 1.8 liter so it's located under this plastic box right here in order to take out the plastic box we need to take out the air box and then there is three bolts that uh, also needs to be taken out the air box is out there was a bolt here that i missed to tell you about three bolts torques or this something i'll tell you now is uh, actually E8. That's uh, the that's the sensor right here. Even though I'm not a power changer, I have this one laying in the back and it looks like a brand new. So um, I'm gonna replace it just to see if it fixes the car. Okay. Now make sure you don't drop the bolts. These bolts here. Make sure you don't drop them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film, but you can see one is right here and the other one is right there. Okay, one here. And one over there. So I'm gonna replace it. I will see if it fixes the issue. If it does not, could be the computer or it could be the wiring from the sensor to the computer or it could be the new sensor as well sometimes they're faulty from the factory so this one needs to fit like like this inside keep in mind there is a little tap that needs to fit in place Let's try to get it right. There we go. Okay. So why are we keeping it like this? Get the screw. You can't do it with a long extension. I tried, and keep your finger. Keep your finger right here in order to not lose the bolt. Because if you drop the bolt, oh, if you drop the bolt, it's so bad. I dropped it once. It goes straight where it's not supposed to go and it's one big pain I connected everything up loosely you know, so I can just crank the car and see if there is still a fault ok I'm gonna show you now why parts changing is not always the best idea let's just go to fault codes ok and that's because I cleared them We'll start up the car. You can see it takes some time to start up, otherwise we'll start straight away. We'll refresh the list. And we'll see the fault code is still there, which means that either the new sensor is also faulty, the computer is bad, or the wiring is bad. I'll bet, I'll bet on the computer, because it's the hardest. <laughs> okay, well, I'll need a multimeter to measure it. Okay, so uh, two days later, uh, I played a little bit with the sensor and I went on the internet. And the internet people are saying, and they may be right because the posts are from 10 years ago, and uh, <clears throat> people know stuff, okay? Read the internet, it's not that bad. The sensor needs to be for this specific X18 XE1 and most Opel Vauxhall engines needs to be original Siemens VDO sensor okay 
like it says here. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Siemens right here, GM. I don't know, it says video somewhere, but I think it does. Okay, so it's from the scrapyard. It costs 7 euros. The, chi the Chinese that I had spare was uh, 75 euros. And this one, I asked the previous owner, was 150 euros. 150 euros for not working one. Both Chinese are not working. And I'll show you now how you can check this. Okay. So, we need to get to the, give me a second, actually I'll make your drawing how everything works first, okay. Now, we have the computer that everyone told me is the problem, okay, the computer is sending, there is three cables going to the, uh, there is three cables going to the sensor okay we got the sensor and there is three cables going to the plug okay one here is constant five volt supply to the sensor going this way okay one is the signal which for this specific car is five volts pull down design so when the when the sensor it's sending voltage this is actually zero volts okay so we got 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts. Okay, so that's what it, the issue is. And this is a ground. Okay, we'll put minus in the middle. So, 5 volt constant. When we check when the ignition is on, we have it. And 5 volts, when the plug is disconnected, we still have it. So the issue is sending 5 volts on both cables. I check the ground and ground is good. How do you do the checks? Okay. You have the three prongs on the thingy. You have a ground here on the battery. You can see one lead is going to the ground right here. The other lead is going on the back side of the pin with a little pin. And I can see I got five volts. Can you see? Five volts? Yeah. Okay. So the ignition is on. You need to have five volts here. Disconnected, don't forget, disconnected. And you need to have five volts here. Okay. You can put you can put the ground pin here and you can measure the voltage drop. So the voltage drop when you're cranking the car, you put the prong here, the red one, black one to the minus, red one in the middle, or you're finding your ground. Okay. 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 volts okay that's 100 to 200 300 millivolts mv okay now i will show you what a normal good working good working sensor this one is old this one is like 25 years old sensor but still is good and it is working okay let's see how i can film this okay give me a second i have the connector right here i don't know if you can see it and i just connected one of the pins to the back okay so we got here i don't know if you can see it but can you? Almost, yeah. Okay. And when I touch the sensor, it will go to zero. Can you see it? It just needs a, a little bit of metal on the front. Can you see? 0 0.1 volt. 5 volts. And now you see how it moves. This is a very delicate device, so 
it sends the signal very quickly we can't really check it with the multimeter you can search scanner damer how to check holes hole type uh, camshaft and crankshaft sensor okay I learned this principle from him it's one of the best teachers you can find okay now we're gonna swap the sensor again and we'll see if it works and it's detecting a uh, fault and meanwhile we need to dismantle all this again is that not always this sensor is working properly so I want to show you I want to show you that the cables were almost bad yeah so I took some shrink you can see on the red cable and I just protected the cables from each other because we don't want to blow the the computer maybe we can't blow it but uh, we can definitely send wrong signals or not send the signal at all okay so I got the new sensor and you can see the reading you can actually see because the multimeter is relatively quick can you see the bottom line that's the signal that is being sent I got the sensor installed as well yeah and I'm back probing the left side of the connector let's see I mean I saw that it runs uh, it starts a lot quicker sorry about that we can see that we got no fault codes okay now we got no dashboard light as well see just see how much quicker the whole thing starts compared from the beginning yeah it's a lot quicker I don't know if it's running smoother but it starts a lot quicker for sure that's it that's uh, how to repair your fault code and manage to uh, troubleshoot the sensor without spending hundreds hundreds that's it I hope the video has been I hope the video has been uh, helpful to you Leave me a comment and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.